Uh, should I feel bad? Yeshiva guys call me a cheater for using uh, Mitziva or Art Scroll. Should I only learn where no one sees me? Anybody that calls you a cheater for using Art Scroll is a kufel in Gdolei Israel. He's a kufel in Gdolei Israel and will have to be punished for it and also have Midat Amalek. You should never talk to them again. And the reason why is because Gdolei Israel, Rav El Yashiv, Rav uh, 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 Fein, uh, David Feinstein, Rav Moshe Feinstein, uh, uh, all of Gdolei Israel supported Art Scroll and said uh, that it's the greatest thing uh, that uh, was in the Torah world. Rav uh, 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 Steinemann, Rav um, uh, Kanievsky, many of the Gedolim uh, appreciated a, uh, 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 what Art Scroll did and, uh, and how it's a great benefit to the generation. But the truth is, it's not, they didn't just appreciate it because they made it easier for people to understand the Pshat. This is not what they, why they supported it so much. There are other ways to understand the pshat and easier ways than just simply looking at a blood uh, and, and, and breaking your head on it. There are other ways. So why do they appreciate it so much? Because they made it in such a uh, 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 nice presentation that it makes it much more likely that the person could not only arrive at the correct pshat, the right meaning of what the Gemara says, but also it gives him the ability to now use all of the energy that he has to actually develop upon it and understand the var mitoch davar, to understand more than what the Gemara is, is, is saying from the pshat. He's not exerting all of his energy on arriving at the pshat, he's exerting his energy on other things, on learning more, on, on learning, on learning uh, 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 more details, the problem is with people that are against the, the, uh, the uh, art scroll, it's usually people that are ame aratzot, the complete ignoramuses. They've never completed anything in their life. They've never completed the shas at least once. And they've never completed tosfot. They've never completed any real scheme to speak of. Maybe they completed a, a, a basic book by a local chassid. Other than that, they didn't complete anything of value. Maybe they completed a few dapim here and there, but never a complete masechet. But they have a lot of jealousy, and they don't know how to control that jealousy. They don't want to control their mouth. They don't have basic level of midot. They don't know the basic al They are never allowed to tell anybody not to learn Torah in the way that is uh, making them successful. It's midat amalek. Udvar Hashem baza karet karet nafsho. This is an idin karet for what they did. They have no idea what kind of hole they build themselves in. They have no idea what they did to themselves. Literally, if I was, if I was them, I would cry on the floor right now. I would cry on the floor, bang my head on the floor until HaKadosh Baruch forgives me. For, for what they did. You have no idea how much bad people get for doing things like this. Because what they do is they discourage people from having any sense of achievement without having anything else that, that is equivalent. And the worst part about it is that they're not doing it for the betterment of that person. They're just doing it purely out of jealousy. They're doing it purely out of arrogance. Nothing good ever comes out of them. You cannot be right and Rav Moshe Feinstein wrong. You cannot be right, and Rav David Feinstein wrong. You cannot be right by, by Rav Steinemann wrong. You, it's not possible for these little peanuts, nothing zeros, that do not even have half a shas behind them to be right, and one of Gdolei Israel to be wrong. It's simply impossible. I spoke to some people from art school. I spoke to some people that are serious to me. Literally, the, the, the amount of wisdom behind what they put there is beyond what an average person can even comprehend. The average person doesn't even benefit from what Archko can offer. But the average person doesn't understand that Archko is not making the Gemara easy for you. It's just simply eliminating the chances of you making a mistake on the basics. Real learning happens after that. Real learning is developed after you got the Pshat. That's the part that you have to break your head no matter how many translations you have. So that's, that's how little these people know. They don't understand that what Archcrow offers you is not all the details and the secrets and all. It doesn't think for you. It gives you the basics in order to eliminate the mistake. I've spoken to a lot of young Bahuim. Many times they went to yeshiva their whole life. They learn the, the, the way that people learn. I ask them, okay, what are you learning now? Oh, uh, Bab Metzia. Okay, no, what's, uh, what, pay, what daf are you on? They don't even know what daf they're on. They don't even know what daf they're on. Okay, what's the last sugya that you learned? Ah, uh, I think it was uh, the show. They're not even sure. Okay, no, fine. Tell me, what, what do you know? Tell me what you know. Nine out of ten times, even what they think they know is wrong. 
Why? Because they don't understand the language. Nine out of ten times the Bachuim do not understand the language anywhere near as they think they understand it. And that little difference, that small difference in understanding the language makes all the difference. Makes all the difference. Like the amount of, uh, uh, of, of ignorance a person has to have to, to criticize a Talmidei Chachamim that supported something to help people understand the basics is beyond because what ends up happening is that people don't understand that there are certain terminologies in Judaism, in, in the Talmud, in the Torah, that there is no correct translation for it in English or any other language. And thereby requires certain commentary on it. And if you do not know that, you're not going to understand anything. You're not going to, you're going to stand wrong. Sometimes there are certain lingos that are used by poskim that they're saying, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, Rav Chai. Now, there was a Rav Chai Gaon, Rav Chai Gaon, a, uh, the famous uh, Rav, but there's a, a Chai that if you only put the one psik on it, it's referring to my brother. It's not a chai. It's, not the, it's, it's spelled the same way as a chai, but it has one psik instead of two psik. The point being is, if a person learns a lot of poskim, they know exactly what I'm talking about. One psik, two psik, they exactly know. If they don't learn poskim, they're thinking that whoever quoted this is, is making a mistake because they're calling this person a, uh, a, an author of, uh, of a book that was written 800 years ago when the, the author really wrote a book uh, 20 years ago, 100 years ago. So... The average person reading a Talmud today is not taught a lot of this stuff. The average person is not even taught to start a Gemara and finish a Gemara. Usually they give them random pages from different places. So when a person learns art school from beginning to end, reads everything on the page, I can assure you that person will become a much bigger Talmud Chacham than the vast majority of people that are, are out there, needless to say, all of the people that are mocking him, all of the people that are making fun of him, all of them, without exception. Most of those people, many times, will not even, become, will not even be religious in a few years. Why? Because it's midat amalek. Midat amalek, to discourage somebody from learning Torah, is midat amalek. It comes from arrogance, it comes from a bad place. And it's, 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 it's literally something that if they understood what they did, they would cry on the floor like tikkun chatzot. Tikkun chatzot, they cry on the floor for doing that. And unfortunately, I've had many, many stories of people doing that. Sometimes even rabbis. Sometimes even rabbis. And all, they only realized they did something bad after they destroyed the kid. He doesn't want to learn anymore because he feels like his three quarters of a masechah that he finished with arch coal is not good enough. He has to start all over. He doesn't have the energy and uh, he loses everything. Whereas I've had an Avrech come to me. I've had an Avrech come to me. He was already an Avrech for five, seven years. Avrech for seven years. Meaning he went throughout the entire yeshiva system. His father was a rabbi. He was told me the yeshiva his whole life. Learned his whole life. Became an Avrech after yeshiva. Seven years. When I met him, he came to me, he told me, I told him, I started talking about what he learns, this, that, and the other thing. I learned, you know, a little bit already. And I told him, would you, um, which Masechet have you completed? And he said, I did uh, Masechet Tubot and Brachot. I said, wait, for what, 20 times, 50 times? What do you mean? What do you mean, Masechet Tubot? What do you mean? You're, you're, you're 30 years old. You finished two Masechetot? Seven years in a kolal? Your whole life? He goes, yeah, it takes a long time to finish a Masechet. I said, you're killing yourself. I told him, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is against what Gdolei Israel taught. You go to a uh, Achtov Li Israel, Perek Bet, the uh, Rabbi Fraim writes a whole tshuva about learning and how pilpul that they do in yeshivot today is literally destroying people. It's not helping people. Many of, all of Gdolei Israel were against it. Rav Shach, Rav uh, Ovadia Yosef, many of Gdolei Israel were against the way that people teach in yeshivot today. With all this pilpul and going back and forth five hours on the same page, all this stuff is not the way that uh, you learn Torah. Either way, I told him, you're killing yourself for no reason. You're not going to become Talmud Chacham this way. Learn arch crawl. Learn arch crawl. You'll be able to start finishing Masechtot. You'll be able to learn Masechtot. Don't take uh, four years, three years to finish Masechet Brachot. It's crazy. You could finish it in, uh, in a month, two months. 
you learn more, less, obviously. But uh, certainly it shouldn't take uh, uh, three, four years to finish. And needless to say, two masechtet in a lifetime, 30 years old already, seven years in a kolel. And all they learn is Gemara all day. Seven years, two masechtet. Long story short, he was Bo Hashem. I was fortunate enough to convince him. After that, he started finishing one masechet after the other, finished masechet Shabbat, finished Abu Dazara, finished a, uh, uh, many others, Baruch Hashem. He, uh, each time he finished it, every time, you know, he would send me a video of his Siyu masechet, how happy he is, how it changed his life. He finally knows something. And Baruch Hashem, it helped. Uh, Baruch Hashem. So again, if a person knows anything, anything about Torah, they would never in their wildest dreams ever speak against another person learning, needless to say, another person having a uh, more likely uh, opportunity to understand the pshat from learning art school. Only arrogant ignoramuses speak against it. Nobody that's worth a grain of salt will speak against it. Uh, and, uh, and again, because it's not speaking against the book, it's, it's speaking against logic, and it's speaking against G'dolei Israel that vouched for them. And they didn't vouch for them for no reason. Now, if a person is just starting right now, he's five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, he's learning Torah, he's advanced, he's ready to start learning Talmud, of course, you give him a regular Talmud, you don't give him an art school because he can learn everything from the beginning. He has all the time in the world. He's 10 years old, nine years old. But if a person is about you by 18, 20, 25, 30, 35, there's no need for him to go back to uh, uh, the, that. You need to learn the way that is going to get you to pretty much be on an even playing field with somebody that's been learning their whole life. You're an even playing field on day one. And that is what is necessary. That is going to give a person a sense of accomplishment that is necessary for them to achieve anything in their life. Thank you very much for learning with me. May Hashem bless each and every single one of you. I need to keep some of my energy, Baruch Hashem, to do another lecture later today, uh, tonight, in Hebrew. Uh, and, uh, but uh, this year will be online on uh, YouTube later on uh, t- uh, tomorrow. And again, anyone that wants to donate, support, uh, can go to our website, bhtorah.org or bezatashem.org or go to the store, the BH Kiruv store, and order some stuff to distribute in their community, USBs, the cards, which are certainly my favorite thing to give out to people because it gets them directly to where they need to learn some of these movies, watch these movies, get inspired, and then learn the rest of the lectures. Watch it, learn it. And Bezat Hashem, be holy. Call to Bachabat Slacha.